this is Anthony Pettis versus uh, Amber Pettis, it looks like. There's a few other names there, and I don't want to get them wrong. May I please have an out? And we're here on a uh, merits divorce and a motion to consolidate. This is a remote case, which has been announced for three hours. We have given the party the parties the entire morning. So with that, may I please have announcements for the movement and then the respondent? Dennis Hunsberg on behalf of Anthony Perez, petitioner and movement. Good morning, Mr. Hunsberger. And who's here on, on behalf of respondent? Summer Benford, Your Honor, attorney for respondent uh, Amber Pettis, who is present. All right. Very good, Ms. Benford. And good morning. We're happy to have both of you here. And welcome to the parties as well. All right. I have us down for a, uh, a merits divorce case and also a motion to consolidate. Um, I'm going to clear out that screen. And if um, Mr. Hunsberger, maybe you could give me a little of a bit of an opening statement about what you want me to be looking for today. And then I'd like to hear from Ms. Benford. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, so, Your Honor, this divorce was filed uh, back in 2018. Um, we had temporary orders and uh, emergency orders. Um, Mr. Perez has been sole managed conservator of the children since uh, December of 2018. Um, Ms. Perez has had some visitation throughout the years. Um, we ended up in mediation in 2020. We did have a mediated settlement agreement. Uh, a divorce decree was drafted. Um, we've been trying to get this divorce finalized. As you can see, it's uh, nearly five years old. And um, uh, during that entire five-year period, Mr. Perez has been sole managed conservator of the children. Um, we were here several months back trying to finalize it. And at that point, um, I guess Ms. Benford had found that there was a child support case in Williamson County, which is the case that we're trying to consolidate now. We, we had it transferred from Williamson County to uh, Travis County. That's the D1 FM 23 case. Um, so that's what the consolidation is. And I, I believe we're in agreement to just consolidate them. Uh, there shouldn't be any argument about that. Okay. Um, but that's what kept us from finalizing the hearing, you know, finalizing the divorce several months back is that we had this open child support case in Williamson County. Um, so most everything in the mediated settlement agreement is fine. There's one issue. And the one issue is, is that um, uh, a little over a year ago, Mr. Perez got a new job in New York. Um, uh, I should say uh, um, he got promoted and moved to New York for his promotion in his company. Uh, as sole managed conservator, he had the right to do that. There's no orders keeping him from moving. But in the mediated settlement agreement from three years ago, it does say that, that there is going to be a regional restriction to uh, Travis, I believe it's Travis County and the surrounding counties. Um, so that is our issue, uh, is that um, the mediated settlement agreement from three years ago is old, it's stale, things have changed quite a bit since three years ago, and the children are doing great, they're going to school, they're doing well in school, they're very healthy and happy children. And uh, so um, in the mediated settlement agreement, it gives uh, Ms. Perez um, joint managed conservatorship. So it changes it from, from his sole managed conservatorship to joint. Uh, it was one of the things that we, we agreed upon. It gives her expanded standard with, of course, the um, over 100 miles provision is, is in it as well. Um, so basically what we're asking the court is to, to hear the evidence about the children, how well they're doing in New York, and allow us to enter the divorce decree um, and that the divorce decree not have a regional restriction on Mr. Perez as he and the children have been living in New York for quite some time now. And um, I mean, that's that's the gist of it. Um, everything else I believe is an agreement. I'll let Mr. Benford, if there's something else that we aren't doing in agreement, uh, I'm not aware of it, but I'll, I'll let her address the court for that. Mr. Hunsberg, how, um, how many children are there and how old are they? Oh yes, of course, there are two children. Um, they are, 13 and I believe 10. Uh, they're 2000, 2010 and 2013 are their birth dates, uh, birth years. Um, uh, the two girls, and um, they're, they're doing really well. And uh, Mr. Perez is going to testify about how they've been doing at school and how, how uh, adjusted and well they're doing with everything uh, at their new home. Do you know when they moved to New York? I don't have the exact date, Mr. Perez. We'll get it from your client. That's okay. Yeah. I just, I'm just putting some, you know, a little skeleton of notes down here. We'll get it from your client. That's okay. All right. Anything else, Mr. Hunsberger? I think that's all I have, Your Honor. All right. Very good. Thank you. Ms. Benford, uh, I'd also like to hear from you, please. Thank you, Your Honor. So the bare bones of Mr. Hunsberger's uh, explanation of the history of the case is, is exactly correct. Your Honor, and we are asking not to relitigate or since we haven't litigated, we mediated. We would ask that the mediated settlement agreement 
be uh, entered as is and that all of the um, agreements that are within it be upheld as uh, case law and the law states. It's it's not a rule 11. It can be rescinded. It is a mediated settlement agreement that meets all of the requirements. Um, I'll be offering that to the court to show. Uh, we would uh, want the court to know that there has been, um, it, you know, I noted that counsel noted at the very beginning of his opening that the father has been the sole managing conservator. You know, we mediated those those issues. And, you know, I would ask the court to consider that we did that because there has been uh, there was there was some there was some contention that was worked out. But then about a year ago during this move, uh, which counsel has already admitted, admitted to and his, his client will testify to, there was a move that was outside of the mediated settlement agreement. There will not be any evidence where there will show that the parents talked about the move, that the mom knew. There has not been uh, not necessarily an equal sharing of the kids. That's impossible in real life anyway, but there hasn't been on the father's, uh, on the petitioner side, um, uh, co-parenting, if you will. And so uh, there has been a lack of communication, a lack of contact between the respondent mother and the children. And uh, it's in direct opposition to what we agreed to. And we think that is going to continue. Um, so we would ask again that the mediated settlement agreement be made into an order as it as it is, and that uh, once it is made an order of the court that the father or that the petitioner be enforced. And we're not even really in a position to ask that. But since we are before you, a district judge, your honor, I'm going to ask the court that it would enforce the MSA as it is. It's been, you know, three years as the petitioner states, and it doesn't just get old and expire and become stale. And MSA is an agreement that once it becomes an order has to be changed by the court uh, through a modification, just like any other order. And so uh, that is our position today, your honor. Okay, very good. All right, thank you so much. So here's um, a couple of things I want to, you know, kind of put out there before we get started. If you all have any exhibits that you've agreed to, that's fine, but don't forget to admit them. <laughs> okay, don't forget to admit them. Uh, that's very helpful to the court. Um, you know, obviously, I'm going to be listening to the best interest of the children in this. So please be mindful of that as well. Um, don't forget that you do have a divorce to prove up, you know, because we're going to try to grant a divorce at the end of all of this. And that's so those are the three things. And it also looks like that we need to go on and uh, rule the motion to consolidate first. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. If we could if we do the consolidation first, that would uh, be helpful. Ms. Benford, do you have any objection to me doing that? No, no objection, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Hunsberger, is there any argument to be made on the motion to consolidate or do you just need a ruling from the court essentially? Yeah, we, we filed the motion and I, I might have actually uh, sent in a proposed order as well, but if not, I can. Okay. Ms. Benford, did you have an opportunity to see the motion and the order? I did, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. The motion to consolidate is granted. Okay. okay. Thank so, you, Honor. Yeah, make sure to get a, just a copy of it and we'll get it signed, um, you know, ASAP. Later today, in fact, if you send it to 455.submission, I'll try to sign it on our morning. Right. You may call your first witness. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I call Anthony Perez. And are you currently married to Amber Perez? Yes. And just prior to filing this case, were you a domiciliary of Texas for the preceding six months and a resident of Travis County for the preceding 90-day period? Are you talking about current or before? No, the, uh, on the date of the filing. Yes, we were in Travis County, both of us. We had bought a house together in Maynard, Texas. Okay. And when were you married? Uh, 2000. Uh, September 30th, 2005. And when did you guys cease to live together as husband and wife? Uh, September 30th, 2018. And has your marriage to Amber Perez become insupportable because of a discord or a conflict of personalities that destroys legitimate ends of the marriage relationship? Could you kind of go into detail with that? I want to make sure I'm answering it correctly. Sure. Has your marriage to Amber Perez become insupportable be because of a discord or conflict of personalities that destroys legitimate ends of the marriage relationship? Well, I, I'm not quite sure. We had an argument on the 30th and I was at work and she left and that's how we ended up here. And okay. well, um, let me, let me ask it this way. Um, do you guys not get along anymore as husband and wife? Yeah, we, we, we know uh, 
I try to be as cordial as possible. Um, I have texted her throughout this last year to try to make but arrangements. That's no response of your honor. Okay, it's not though. He's just trying to prove up the divorce because I I tried to spark you all a little bit into this because I didn't want you to get all that. We just had some problems recently. People get all the way through it and they forget <laughs> very basic things. I, I did that once. Best okay, interest no. of the kid. <laughs> <laughs> I so, did that last time and, and the judge called me out on it, so I don't do that anymore. I go yeah. Make the prove up questions. Let's get that done and then we'll get into the real stuff. Yeah. So the only thing that he's trying to prove up right now, uh, Mr. Pettis, don't overthink this. Is that you all don't get along very well. And anymore, and you can't be married because there's discord and conflict. Please don't overthink this question. Let's the objection is overruled. Mr. Hunsberger, give it another try. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Is there any reasonable expectation of reconciliation? Not at all. No. Okay. And could you um, give the names and date of birth of the two children that were born of this marriage? Um, uh, Ariel, 2010. Uh, and then we have Aurora, 2013. Any other children born or adopted during the marriage? No. Okay. Um, to the best of your knowledge, do you know if Amber Perez is expecting a child at this time? No, I'm not. I'm not at this time. You have proposed some agreements that you and, and Ms. Perez have come to. Are you asking the court to um, finalize your divorce and accept those agreements that you guys have made? I want, I'd like to finalize the divorce. Um, the only Concern is the custody um, because I have moved to New York with, for a job promotion. Um, but other than that, I, I would like to move forward with this. Now, um, other than the regional restriction, uh, we presented a proposed divorce decree. Um, and I believe we're also going to have the mediated settlement agreement in front of the court. Other than the actual regional restriction, are there any other portions of the divorce decree that you are not in agreement with? No. Okay. Okay. All right, Your Honor, I'll, I'll go into the reasons for it now. Okay, so let's start at the beginning of the divorce. Um, you have two children, and they are, I guess they are 10 and 13, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And this divorce started um, the end of 2018, is that correct? Correct. No, like I said, uh, it was September 30th. It would have been our 14th uh, wedding anniversary when all this uh, happened. Okay. And do you recall... Uh, going into court and requesting an emergency protective order i do okay and what was that for uh domestic violence um i was there was an argument that occurred during uh september 30th that um she falsified that i had okay. abused her on my right arm from when i blocked her swinging on me and she bounced off me and when i talked to Maynard pd because um she had filed domestic violence charges on me and i had also went and talked to Maynard Police Department about the situation to make sure that I had my, you know, statement on uh, record. Um, they did see the defense wound. Um, they decided, you know, advised me to go ahead and put a protection order on her. Hearsay. Uh, their... I'm sorry. Objection to the hearsay, Your Honor. Uh, is, is the objection sustained? Um, Mr. Pettis, let's let's not talk about what others said to you. We get into a hearsay problem, Mr. Huntsberger. Okay, my apologies. My apologies. No, okay. Um, Mr. Berger, you may yeah. Let me ask the next question, Mr. Press. Um, so, did you end up getting a protective order? I did. And did you also go to court and request um, an emergency order to give you custody of the children? I did. And what was the basis, uh, other than what you already discussed? Were there any other basis for uh, getting custody of the children? Uh, yes, there was a report with CPS on uh, Amber that she was uh, um, through the case filing that I had received from. Uh, I'm afraid to say because it's a hearsay, but um, there was a case that was opened on about some drug usage with uh, her previous her fir her first child's uh, father. And uh, but did you have concerns about uh, domestic violence, drug use, and mental health issues? I did. Okay. And was this the basis, were those three things the basis for you getting um, or, or requesting a temporary orders and a protective order? It was. Okay. And ultimately you did get a uh, sole managed conservatorship of the children. Uh, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. How has the um, visitation since you became sole managed conservator, uh, how has the visitation with Ms. Perez been and the children? Um, the, for the first year before we went, and did the when we did the uh, mediation, I guess it was about a year and a half, two years. Um, it was weekend visits only, nine to six. So I'd, if I had to work, I always make sure she had the kids on the, the weekends that she was granted. 
from that time frame, we had a meeting destination at IHOP or we'd meet at a, you know, public uh, location to transfer the kids over and pick up as well. Um, I did have to work on Saturdays from one to 10 with my job. So my mom would pick them up sometimes. Um, but we, we did well. Um, after that, there was some changes and relationships for her and housing that made a big concern for me. Cause, um, again, this could be hearsay, um, but, from the conversation with the children read home, there was some issues that started coming up with domestic violence at her home, uh, drug use, and uh, just some neglect that was going on there. Um, so it did bring some safety and con- uh, safety concerns for my children. Um, and I just want to make sure they're safe and secure. That's the main reason why we're here today. Did, did the visitations um, change then? Did they increase, decrease, stay the same? Uh, after we did the mediation, we went forward with what was on paper. Um, that's when we started having a lot of uh, conflicts with um, her now boyfriend, fiance, um, to where it was on their terms and only their terms. Um, I Even when they got COVID, I was advised to go pick them up because they could not be at her household. Um, there's been multiple times where the girls come back upset or have not wanted to go over to the household due to the, the fiance. Um, he apparently, uh, and I've had, um, conversations where he gets very, uh, very loud and I'm tries to be narrative, your honor. Is there a, I, I'm objecting to the narrative. Okay. Uh, the objection is sustained. Uh, Mr. Hansberger, uh, let's uh, keep those questions flowing. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, so you have concerns about domestic violence, um, over at, uh, Ms. Perez's home and your children being around it. Correct. Okay. And do you have any personal experiences with, uh, I believe you were saying her current boyfriend or boyfriend at the time? Yes. Um, he's on multiple occasions. He's cussed me out, told me that I'm a loser and not, you know, um, I, I try to be cordial. Um, I, I even had at one point had to, uh, my ex-girlfriend at the time was watching the kids and was going to do a transfer last May, not uh, May of 2022. Um, I had to go see my grandfather who was, um, who had cardiac uh, heart failure. So I had to rush up there to see him and it was their weekend visit. And, um, she ended up having to call the police cause, um, the children didn't want to go. And her boyfriend actually got really loud with the, the police officer and they filed a case against him because he was, a, uh, it was, he was yelling and screaming at the cops and they had to go calm him down. Okay. And you have, are you concerned that your children are around that type of uh, behavior? Yes, I am. All right, let's talk a little bit about um, what's going on now. Um, when did you move to New York? November 29th. Okay, and was uh, that 2022? You? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. And could you tell the court a little bit about um, what kind of job opportunities were you given out in New York? Um, I, I was previously a call center supervisor and uh, I was approached by my um, vice president of my call center that felt that I had great talents. And uh, we had started talking about a business plan back in September about trying to utilize my skills in the Northeast to get another side of the business, um, a face-to-face um, uh, approach and uh, looking at as a higher role as a store manager to learn how to run a business um, to be more um, to get another promotion. I'm trying to advance my career with Spectrum. I've been there 10 years. So, I'm really looking forward to seeing another side of the business. Um, And she had some great talent that's up here in the Northeast and wanted me to get the experience to their management and leadership skills, um, which I've been going to uh, trainings with them, uh, taking my score, you know, just making sure that my story where it needs to be um, to, you know, progress in my career right now. So are you, are you getting additional training in New York? Is that, is that what I was hearing? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm getting a lot of leadership training with this new position because it allows me to expand my market, um, which is giving me the more of a, a broad range of a region versus just a call center. So it allows me to go into other stores, help coach and lead um, those teams and then teach other store managers how to run a business as well as I'm learning as well. I just actually got back from a training about last week. And are you uh, earning more income now that uh, you've been promoted? Yes, I am. Okay. Is this something that you've been striving for during your 10 years with, uh, was it Sprint? Spectrum. Spectrum. Yeah, Charter Communications is the actual name of the business. We just brand Spectrum. Okay. Okay. 
All right. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how the girls are doing now. Uh, what grades are the girls in? Uh, Ariel is currently in the eighth grade and Aurora's in the fifth grade. And how is Ariel doing in school? Um, she's doing quite well. Um, I've seen a total change in my daughter and Ariel since we've gotten up here. She's thriving to get straight A's. Um, she's, you know, we, we did volleyball over the summer. She's really thriving to do well with her curriculum. She's staying on task. She's doing fantastic. Um, she's doing a lot better here in New York with her studies. She's achieving the goal. She's even uh, this last uh, school year, she was nominated to have her artwork uh, displayed in the town library. Um, so she took a lot of pride in that. Um, currently she's in church. We, you know, we do a lot of teen nights. We're doing a lot of Bible studying. Um, I've seen a whole different personality come out of my daughter this year. Um, and I just think it's for her feeling safe and not having to stress about all the, the hardships that's been going on. And what about attendance? How's her attendance at school? She does well. Um, the only time she'll miss is if we think it's a, a COVID situation. Other than that, she's, we get up at five 30 she's, ready to go by 6.15 and we walk out to the bus stop together talking about a game plan for the day, just giving her some positive affirmations for the day to make sure that she's ready to go and feels positive and ready to learn for the day. Okay. And uh, what about your younger child? Um, how's she Over. doing? She's doing wonderful. Um, we actually had a parent teacher uh, meeting last night where I got to meet the teachers. Um, they thrived about her personality that even with all the hardships, she's what's, 115 percent effort in all her school work she's very positive she walks around giving all the teachers high five thanks them um i was really impressed to hear the the great news you know just the good things about my daughter and how she's learning and thriving to do well in school she's um she worked the teacher told me literally she works harder than the teacher some days and they're they are blessed to have her there and is this different from what was going on in texas uh let's say i guess it would be two years ago now Yes, um, it is. Um, Ariel was having a lot of struggles in the sixth grade um, during the time that we were doing uh, the mediation. Um, how do you say, I guess, visitation um, every Thursday when she would go to her uh, with Amber, she would come home stressed. Um, she wasn't able to work. She was seeing a counselor to do due to all this. Um, she was having a lot of conflicting stress of going over to my mom's house and not being able to get her work done. Um, it was a constant stress level for her. Um, even, uh, it just, she wasn't where she is now. Um, I've seen a total 180 on her. Um, she's excited about going to school when she was uh, going to Cedar Park at that time. She just didn't even want to go. Now she's up ready. She has a goal of, uh, making the A on a road to be able to go, go to Washington DC this year with, uh, on a class trip. So that's something that she's striving for. She was not like this when we were in Texas. She was stress very down um uh, it, it had a lot of effect on her and having this less of stress of having to go over there has really uh made her life a lot easier and made she's brightened up and really come out of, coming out of her shell at this point you think that it would be detrimental for your children to have to return to texas at this point i do um they love it up here um, like i said we got ariel on volleyball she's very um ed dedicated to her our classes um or, and re right now we're really linked into our, our church we go to victory church now and she's loving it she's meeting friends she wasn't doing that in texas she was very um secluded she de, de like de deconnect from everybody she was just sitting in her room she doesn't do that now um i, I i've seen a whole totally different ch uh, child and um you know like you know and this is something that y'all can talk to her about as well if, you know, if it needs to be but she wants to be here this is where she's happy right now um how have things changed since the mediation back in 2020 and now um what, what are the big changes that you've seen um amber is with the new boyfriend. Um, when we did the mediation, she had a, another boyfriend at the time, that a live-in boyfriend. Um, and it was concerning, but things were going well. He would, you know, that Daniel would come talk to me. We, you know, talk about the kids, make sure that they're going to be taken care of. He was very supportive of Amber. 
um, this new Daniel that she's with, um, he's very controlling. Um, I've seen it where he belittles her. Um, it's just, it's, there's a lot more drama in her life with this gentleman. Um, it's inconsistent. Um, and I've just seen my children not want to go over there because they're scared of him. Um, there's been a big concern with their safety and making them feel secure when they're around their mother to the point where they have not wanted to reach out to her. I've reached out to Amber and we've even had conversations. I got the girls in counseling with this right now, trying to get them to build. Honor, rebuild. Objection to the, to the, um, the narrative. Yeah, I agree. I think we are into a narrative again. So Mr. Huntsberger, let's, uh, Oh, Mr. Pettis, you're you're doing a great job. Just let's let your attorney ask the questions, okay? Okay. All right. Thank Sorry you. about that. No, no. My apologies. Mr. Huntsberger, please proceed. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> right. So at this point, you are asking the court to um, to allow you to stay in New York um, with the children, but all other terms of the divorce decree and a, and a mediated settlement agreement uh, – to, to just agree with those. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And um, the is there any other issues that you would like the court to know about as to the children um, and, and or staying in New York? Um, I mean, besides them being positive and happier now, um, like I said, my, my concern is their safety and their well-being. Um, when we were in Texas, they didn't feel this supported. Um, again, they just, they've, broken that relationship and I keep trying to mend it for them, but I just, you know, I'm just here to make sure that my daughters have a positive role model and that they can live in a positive atmosphere to where they're going to grow into healthy children. You know, I just, that's my concern. I'll pass the witness. All right. Thank you, Mr. Huntsberger. Ms. Benford, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Perez, um, good morning. Um, good morning. I, I don't want to make this um, a fight back and forth. I just want to clear up some things for the court. Uh, so when you were in Texas uh, at the outset of um, the breakup, let's say at the beginning of this, uh, isn't it true that you, the person that you're with in New York is not the person you were dating in Texas? That's correct. All right. And isn't it true that you actually had a couple of relationships while you were here in Texas? I had one. Okay. And your daughters got a chance to know that person? Yes, but they didn't live with us. Okay. However, they uh, that person got a chance to know your kiddos and then that relationship ended for whatever the reasons were, correct? Correct. Okay. And then the person that you are with in Texas, that is the second person in your life, correct? No, I've only had one person in my life. So you're not dating anyone in New York? I'm dating somebody in New York, but I'm not living with them. Again, ask, are you with somebody new in New York? Yes. Okay. Do your children know that person? Yes. Okay. Um, They've actually known this person for uh, since they were born. Okay. Okay. So, it still isn't the person that you were with in Texas. Correct. Okay. So you and Miss Pettis have both dated since you have been broken up. And your children are aware of those people. Correct. Okay. Um, and then isn't it true that um, there was a hearing where the court did, in fact, order that the kiddos live with you, correct? Yes. Okay. Isn't it also true that at that hearing, Ms. Pettis decided to allow the children to remain with you because you were staying in the house and she was living with her parents. Isn't that correct? No, nah, I, I guess that I don't know what her decision making was. Okay. Nevertheless, you ended up living in the home where the kids were living, correct? That was their correct. stable place. Mm -hmm. And Amber <clears throat> was living with her mother because you put her out. Uh, no, she left. Didn't you call the police the night while, while the children were there and had Amber removed from the property? No, uh, Amber decided to leave okay. on uh, uh, September 30th while I was at work with the children, did not notify me and just left. <clears throat> and it wasn't until my mother called me to let me know. And I watched her on the ring camera leave with my children. Okay. No notification, nothing. I never kicked her out. Mr. Pettis, you indicated to us just a while ago that there was a domestic violence incident. Now you're indicating that Amber took the children. She did. I, I, after the, because there was no 
physical contact for me. I literally got in between her and my mother because she charged my mother. And I said, we're not going to do this. I put my hands up. She hit me and bounced off me, fell on the floor and started screaming. And my mother and my father both witnessed this, um, crawled to the room, started screaming as if I was hitting her. I never once touched her. Uh, she calmed down. My mom, you know, talked to us, was like, please, both of y'all calm down. We don't need this. They were going to leave because the night, you know. That is just just a moment. OK, so that that was one incident. And then there you said that Amber took the kids. That's another incident. No, that's all the same day. I ended up going to work because this, this occurred about 11 in the morning because she didn't come home the night before. Um, I was asking her where she was. I didn't know where she was at. She took the kids. Um, the next morning she got in, I guess, about seven in the morning before anyone woke up. Um, and me and my mom had an argument about her because I felt she was disrespecting my wife at the time. And that's when Amber came out, started yelling at my mom, thinking I was taken up for my mother when I was taken up for my wife because, um, and then she charged my mother and I got in between them okay. and tried to stop the altercation because she charged my mother. Okay. So what you just described to us or what you just described to me does not necessarily sound like a domestic violence incident where Amber was violent and attacked you and attacked excuse me, just a second, attacked her mother. This seemed like a misunderstanding and she hit out at you and you indicated to the court just a while ago, your concerns were domestic violence. What you're describing is not necessarily domestic violence. Would you agree? No, because she hit me and she charged me and, and that's why I had the bruise and that's why she was uh, charged with domestic violence by me and her okay. And that's why she had got arrested. All right. And, and were those charges pursued? Do you know if there was a conviction that came out of it? I'm not sure. I know that she did have to turn herself in. Um, she did go to jail for 24 hours and they released her. I, I don't even know the whole thing. I know she had to turn herself in, though. OK. And and how do you know that? She, did she tell you? She did. Okay. Uh, but you don't know if there was a conviction that came of it? I don't. OK. And, and you, Amber has also as well filed charges against you. Isn't that correct with the police? Yes, but that was dismissed because they found the evidence. Nevertheless, Mr. Pettis, were charges filed against you, correct? Again, I was never arrested, never convicted or anything like that. So I'm not what sure because when I made the report with Mainer PD, they mm -hmm. dismissed her charges because they felt it was false fun. Mr. Pettis, that's, you both have alleged domestic mm -hmm. violence against each other. Is that correct? Uh, she falsified it. Again, yes or no, Mr. Pettis. I've never laid a hand on her. She hit me. That's why she was arrested for it. I think we've we've kind of exhausted this line. There's no jury here. I can really hear what's going on. So please, yes. unless there's something interesting in here, I think we've kind of gone through it. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, you alleged that there were some mental health issues during the. Um, ha have you and Miss Pettis talked recently? Uh, yes, we had a conversation about three weeks ago about the children. Okay. I advised her that we need to get them in, that. We need to mend the relationship that her boyfriend is putting her very big stress and they're triggering the children. And that I have, can I finish? I no. have them in counseling for this reason. Daughter, I, I'm not Mr. asking daughter, any of this. My client is trying to answer the question. No. If she okay. has an objection to it, Here, then here's the object. situation, folks. Sometimes you ask questions and you don't like the answer. You ask, have you been talking to her lately? You could say yes and stop. And I guess yes. that's what you wanted. Um, so, but Mr. There's kind of a little bit, I'm going to sustain the objection right now to narrative, but nonetheless, there is a little bit of a, you know, he does get to explain when you ask him a question. So, um, you know, let's try to strike a little better balance on that and proceed. Ms. Benford, okay. <clears throat> In relation to Ms. Pettis's mental health, have you had any recent concerns? Yes. What are those concerns? That she is not mentally stable. That's why she's on disability. What has she said to you in a recent conversation that caused you concern? Because she will not understand that her current boyfriend is the trigger to my children's discomfort and safety. I have explained it to her and I continue to try to mend a bond with them. This is why they do not answer her phone calls. I have literally cried to Miss Perez that we need to work together for our children. That it's not just about me, that it's about our children, not us. Okay, Mr. Pettis, has she indicated to you that her medication has changed? I, I don't, I'm not, that's I'm not in my field to ask that question. Okay, so has she had a, a mental episode or a psychotic breakdown in, here in Texas that you are aware of? Yes, um, she's actually been in a mental hospital three times. Recently? Um, not that I'm aware of, but when we were married. 
do you know, since, since you've been broken up and you allowed your children to go and visit her, has she had any mental breakdowns that you are aware of? Uh, from my children, again, you're going to call it hearsay. I can only go off of what my children tell me when they're around her. And that you've actually seen, let's say that. Again, I, 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 don't, I don't get into her life because her life is her life and I respect that, but I listen to my children. Okay. So she, you, you don't have any actual basis just because she disagrees with you. She has mental health issues. Oh, uh, no, I, I've seen the mental health issues. Okay. I, I, I was married to her 14 years. I took, I went to 10 years of counseling with her marriage, uh, personal thing. You know, I, I've done my due diligence to support her through her mental disorder. Yes, sir. However, after you broke up, you did agree to allow her to have visitation and your children did through your admission, go to her house and stay from Friday to Sunday, not just uh, from, from Friday to Sunday during the, um, when you were allowing access, isn't that correct? Yes. Okay. So you haven't, from your own eyes, you've not seen her have any mental health issues, any. I have witnessed her breakdowns and her crying about what's going on in her relationship. Um, that, you know, it's been tough. Okay. Mr. Pettis, you know, but that's just, again, that's just from our conversations. I witnessed, you know, I've seen her, her upset. I've seen her distraught. I've seen her overwhelmed when I'm picking up the kids. Um, I've even told her that, I felt for her safety at some point because just the things that they do again, I, I'm not trying to overstep or go into hearsay. I'm just trying to respect the court and give the information that I have. And then as far as drug use, that drug use was, um, what drug use are you referring to? Are you referring to what, what are you referring to? Um, in December of 2018, she was called about, uh, through CPS about meth usage. Um, and, I had to go through a drug class because, yes, I was smoking marijuana at that time. Uh, so I did my due diligence, quit smoking, um, took my drug test. Um, per CPS uh, cases, she would not take the drug test. Connection to the hearsay. So you both had a, a, a CPS case that you worked? Okay. No, it was Did you need I... to rule on the objection? This was not a deposition. So okay. the objection is sustained. Uh, you may proceed, Ms. Benford. I'm sorry, Your Honor. That's okay. So you and Ms. Pettis had a CPS case where you both worked service. Well, let me ask you this. You worked services? Yes, I had to. And after that CPS case, uh, did you and uh, Ms. Pettis remain together as a couple? This was before the divorce, correct? Yes, we remained together. All right. And was she clean as well? No. So you remained with a person who was continuing? No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Are you talking about before or after? Because the, the CPS case was after we... The, the initial divorce was started in 2018. Uh, in December of 2018, there was a CPS case that was called on her by her, her oldest son, Sebastian. Objection to the this. No, he's got to clarify. There's two CPS cases. I don't, I thought I am going to overrule that objection because we need to hear a little bit more about this. Obviously, I have to make a decision on where these kids go. And if there's two CPS cases out there, I need to know about them. And I just thought there was one. Now I know there's two. So anyway, I don't think it's objectionable. Okay. All right, okay, Mr. Pettis, just for clarification, uh, for me as well. So were there two CPS cases or one? Well, when after there was one, like when she had my daughter, they tested her and she tested positive for marijuana. Um, we both quit smoking. We did our due diligence. And then when we separated in October of, or September of 2018, uh, there was another case within December that was called on her for smoking meth with um, her son's father. Okay. Okay. And, and that's where I was talking about where they, they asked to investigate me. I apply, I, you know, I went, I did what I needed to do for them. They closed my case out, but her okay. case remained open because they could not get her to take a drug test in their facilities. Um, she, she, she say, your honor, and it's narrative. He, he wouldn't know any of how her case went on unless he talked to a caseworker. We don't have exactly. A well, that's what I'm trying to explain that I was involved because my children were going to be over there and they didn't want her to be around that. So they investigated both of us because I did. Okay. It, I, okay. Let's just stop. I, I think that he can talk about his, what he has observed. He apparently did observe some of this. I don't think he can talk about what caseworker said to him because that's hearsay. He can talk about what he observed. All right. So that he, to the degree the objection is hearsay regarding what someone else said, the objection okay. is sustained. To the degree the objection pertains to things that he personally observed, the objection is overruled. All okay. right, Ms. Pinkford, you may proceed. 
okay, after the CPS, the, after the second CPS case closed, Mr. Pettis, we participated a few years after that in a mediation, didn't we? Yes. All right. And then that, at the end of that MS or M, at the end of that mediation, we agreed or you agreed to allow or not allow, but agreed to share custody, specifically joint managing conservatorship with Ms. Pettis. Isn't that correct? Yes. All right. Um, so would you say at that time, domestic violence, mental health and drug issues were no longer an issue? At that time? Yes. But proceeding the next month is when everything changed. Okay. And so you're saying you're alleging that all of those issues have resurfaced? Yes. Okay. Although, uh, and, and, and none of this is from anything that you've actually seen. These are things that you say that your children have stated or that you just assumed, correct? Uh, well, when she, when she broke up with her, the boyfriend that she was with at that time, with the, um, the, the, the mediation time, um, that's when things started arising that um, she had been beaten by him and there was a, a case involved in that. And that's why she had to move to another depart- uh, an apartment so he could not find her. And that's when issues started arising with me because um, this is what I was observing when they were moving. Mr. Pettis, so you saw Ms. Pettis and, and her, her first boyfriend have a, a fight? No, this is what she told me. Okay. Um, and as far as the, but he's gone. So even if those things are true, he's no longer in the picture. Isn't that what you uh, have testified? Well, so that was into that relationship. Now she's in this new, she moved directly into this new relationship and this well, is where it's continued. The first relationship that you were talking about, that is over. That person is gone. Isn't that correct? Correct. And okay. man, it we're not talking the, about the, the second person, Mr. Pettis. Okay. My, I'm sorry. My apologies. Have you seen, and I will move on to the second person. So the person that she's with now, have you seen, have you witnessed them have a fight? Yes. You've seen him hit her. I've never seen him hit her. Um, I've heard the way, the conversations with him. Um, I've witnessed the way he yells and screams at her in front of the children. So their um, arguments are fights to you. Is that what you're saying? When he raises his voice, that's a fight to you. I'm asking, have you seen him hit her? I have not, phys- I have not witnessed it, but I have been told again, that's hearsay. So, but I just go off of what my daughters tell me. Okay. Okay. All right. Now the year that the uh, children have been in New York, you, uh, have you allowed communication between Ms. Pettis and the girls? I continuously try to get my daughters to contact her. Um, I had multiple conversations with them about that. She is their only mother that they need to build that relationship because that is their mom. I've always wanted them to have that bond in that relationship. Unfortunately, I can't get them past this. This is why I have them in counseling right now to deal with these issues so they can reconciliate with their mother. Um, and that was a conversation we had three weeks ago. And that's been the ongoing conversation with her every time she asks why they're not calling us. And I explained to her and I try to get her on board because it's not about me and her, it's about our children. Mr. Pettis, would you agree that uh, Ms. Pettis contacts you at least weekly regarding how the girls are doing? No, she does not. How often does she call you? Um, she, the last text I got, like I said, was three weeks ago. So does she at least text you weekly asking about no. the girls? No. How often does she text you, Mr. Pettis? I hadn't received a text from her since June before then. She's not. I, I, I mean, I could relook. I may be mistaken. It's been a long, you know, I work a lot, so I can look if you'd like. Um, I have it on my phone, you know, the last conversations I've had with her. Um, that way I can be more direct with you if you'd like. Okay. Well, so let's just back up a bit. So you said that you've been in communication with her the last time being three weeks, but that was in encouraging, um, that was in the spirit of encouraging a relationship. But then you testified that you, you, you two don't talk often and that she doesn't reach out often, which is it you, you talk Uh, again, like I said, we talked at the beginning of September and then I hadn't heard from her since June. We don't communicate often because she has her life and I have my life. Um, I know that, and I ask my daughters every day, have you, has your mom called? They would say that she has. And I ask her, well, do you respond? And they're like, no. And again, that's hearsay, but I'm just trying to explain myself on what I try to do to make sure that they stay in communications. I even offered your client to come out last year. I was gonna pay for her and her daughter to come visit for Christmas, the week that they'd be off. That way that she could see how they were living 
that they were being well taken care of, that they're happy. And so she could at least spend time with them. That was declined by your, your client. All right, folks, we are back. Um, give me just one minute. I'm going to announce the case. I'm looking for the attorney. Looks like we are still an attorney short. Thought she was on here. Can you hear me? Oh, I got to switch. Hang on. This is Anthony Pettis versus Amber Pettis. And that's we when we um, this morning, Ms. Benford had a, another uh, appointment, I believe, on a different case pertaining to a CPS matter, which uh, we did allow her to take some time off. Obviously, CPS always with great concern that we let them get their jobs done. We are back. Uh, we had gotten fairly far along. I had raised a concern this morning about the Wilco case, just because the, our files have not caught up with the Wilco case. And I, we did see an order that appeared to transfer this to Travis County, a new cause number. So that motion to consolidate then is A-OK. -okay. So we're in good shape with that. The other question, of course, was the, the fact that there's a third child here, not subject to the Wilco order, uh, who was born after the parties had separated, but while they're still married. And so... Under the law, there would be a presumption, of course, uh, that Mr. Pettis is the father. He is not. He's And so I just need to make sure that either we do an AOP, DOP, or get both parties to state on the record that he's not the father of the child. Okay? okay. So that's where we are. So with that, I can't quite remember who was. I'm sorry, I've just been in another case. I can't remember if Ms. Benford was questioning a witness or Mr. Hunsberger was. I was about to start. All right, Ms. Benford, then you may proceed. Call your first witness. Your Honor, I'd like to call Ms. Pettis. All right, uh, Ms. Benford, you may proceed. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Pettis, um, you were uh, listening in uh, this morning's trial, of course, right? Mm -hmm. So just for clarification from the court, let's just um, clarify some, some, some things. And let's start with the third child that you have. What is the name of your third child? Faith. Uh, uh, Faith. And, and Faith is not actually your third child child i misspoke what what <laughs> number in order is faith number three wait well, number four. so you have four kids total we can't hear you yes can you hear me yes okay so uh tell us about how old is faith faith is three and a half okay and what's the name of your other child your fourth child Sebastian Snow Sebastian and how old is Sebastian 21 21 so he's not a part of these proceedings at all is he no no and is he Mr. Pettis's son no, no. okay I'm sorry I didn't get that answer you're very mumbled no ma'am I'm sorry no ma'am okay so uh going back to faith you said faith is three years old yes ma'am when is faith's birthday 2019 2019. And when had you and Mr. Pettis separated? September 30th, 2018. Okay. So how long had you been broken up before you found out you were pregnant? Eight months. About eight months. Is there a possibility that she could be Mr. Pettis's daughter? No. Okay. All right. And so is it your testimony that she is not Mr. Pettis's biological daughter? No. Okay. And do you think that Mr. Pettis would claim her as his biological daughter? No, I think you might have your hand on the bottom of that phone, maybe, because it's coming like that. So try to get it. Just hold it on the sides so we can hear it better. Is that better? Yeah, much better. Much better. Okay. Um, so moving on from Faith, Amber, so... Um, so as to not repeat a, a lot of the testimony from earlier, uh, are you wanting the court to order? Well, let me back up. Have you been having consistent visitation uh, with your your with Ariel and Aurora? No, ma'am. All right. When was when was the last time you spoke with either of them? Mm, I spoke to Ariel probably three four days ago. She was it was very short. Um okay. and. Aurora, I would say around April for birthday. April of 2023? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do they each have their own phones? Mm -hmm. And are you able, can you put your hands on the side of your phone? You're muffled again. Okay. Um, you're able to call their phones directly? 
Yes. And do but they I, call their I'm sorry. I, I have them on a group chat. So I, I talk to them, I text them every single day um on their phone three times a day. Okay. So it's, it's your testimony. You text your children three times a day every day. Every day. Uh lately I have missed a couple days. Um, but usually it's three times a day. Okay, but you don't text or contact Mr. Pettis daily to to talk about the girls. No, no. When I do, it goes straight to voicemail, or it just it he doesn't answer. And what so, about when you? And what about when you call the girls directly? Do they answer? Do you text back and forth? It'll be out of a blue moon. I would say I've called them a couple times, and it's like I'm busy. I can't talk, and then they hang up. And that's only from Aurora. Ariel never answers her phone. Okay. Now, is this, um, so it seems as if the girls are not answering. Is this, um, has this been consistent behavior or is this behavior that is new to you? This is new since they left New York. Since they left New York or Texas? They left Texas. I'm sorry. They left Texas. Okay. Like in Texas, I would call and they'll answer, I would say, maybe once or twice a week. Okay. Would you describe your relationship with both of the girls close? We were close um, until uh, he got that temporary order. And I haven't, it's been very, pretty much Ariel and Aurora have told me, and I know it's a he say told me that they didn't want to keep calling or coming over here because they keep getting questioned. And that's the comment I got from them. Okay. And, and who did you think was questioning them? Their, their exact words. You, you, um, yeah, just a second. Was there an objection? I'm sorry, we muffled. Mr. Hunsberg, did you object? I did. Objection, speculation, and hearsay. All right. And what's your response, Ms. Benford? Well, Your Honor, she, you know, is their mother. I would think that there may be some speculation, but these are her, are her girls talking to her. Well, I agree with that. Speculation is overruled. Um, the hearsay I'm a little more concerned about. Maybe just she can talk about their her impressions of them. I think that's Yes, Your Honor, and I can rephrase. Okay. Um, well, let me ask you this, and this is just a yes or no question. Did did they tell you that, did they, did you ask them who was questioning them? Just yes or no? Yes. You said yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you have an idea of who was questioning them? Yes. And who did you... Uh, who did you think was questioning them? Their dad. Okay. Um, did this, did this seem to, um, stress them in a negative way or uh, let me rephrase Amber. So there was some testimony, testimony earlier about the girls receiving counseling services. Were they receiving counseling services when you were together as a family uni unit? Yes, ma'am. All right. And why were they receiving counseling services? There were, it was me and the girls were receiving counseling services together at A&M um, because we were, <clears throat> we were really stressed out. Why? Um, mentally, there was a lot of yelling, especially him with my son. And so I brought the girls with me to the counseling that I was seeing. So she would put them aside while I go sit outside to talk to them. And when you say with him and your son, with who and who and your son? Who and my son, Sebastian Snow. I'm sorry? Sebastian Snow and Anthony. Okay. And um, I'll have a question. All right. So, Ms. Andre, Ms. Glick, obviously these are- Wait a minute. What's, issues. I don't know what's going on. We're getting a playback here. I have a case behind us dealing with children. Uh, uh, children always take precedence. Um, so this say, is the recording from the previous so Let me hearing. ask you this question. We did have a break. Certainly, I needed one. Ms. Guardiola, uh, Ms. Guardiola, Ms. Gonzalez, how do we fix Andre, it? It's the recording from the previous hearing. 
Yes, Your Honor. I think we've agreed on number one. This in is our our hearing. Happening. Addition of there will be no cash withdrawals okay. from the account ending. Well, let's do this. Let's, great. let's sign out and we'll come back in again. That's the best. I Ms. Guardiola, can you hear me? She was sick, so she might have stepped into the doctor's office for a moment. I mean, that's where I'll do it. Ms. Guardiola, it stopped. Whatever it is, it stopped. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. You may proceed, okay. Ms. Benford. Uh, yes, Your Honor. That actually made me lose my train of thought. I'm sorry. It was a little weird. It was a little weird for me. I was like, did I say this a few minutes ago? I kept looking at you to see if your mouth was moving. I'm sorry. Um, so, um, Amber, uh, your testimony is that there was some some discord between Mr. Pettis and your oldest son. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. And this was witnessed by your you and the Aurora and Ariel. Is that right? Yes. And my grandmother. All right. And um, up until you and Mr. Pettis broke up, were the girls participating in counseling services? Um, the day that they supposed to go is when we separated. So no, they stopped. All right. And uh, you heard testimony earlier that, he, that they're getting back involved in counseling services. Did you know about that? Did you hear me? Ms. Pettis, can you hear the question? Oh, I'm so sorry. Re repeat the question again. Did you hear Mr. Pettis earlier testify that he was, uh, that the girls were receiving services now or they were going to receive services now? Did you hear him testify to that, to that this morning? Yes, ma'am. Were you aware of that? No, ma'am. Um, are you kept abreast of how they're doing in school by Mr. Pettis or from the girls themselves? No, ma'am. I don't know what school they're going to. And I just got an address a couple months ago. An so. address to what? Their school or to where they live? Where they live. To where they live? Entire address with the zip code. Okay. And uh, there was uh, some testimony earlier from Mr. Pettis about him offering to pay for you to visit New York. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. And did you accept his offer? No, ma'am. Why not? Because I can't just leave and miss work to New York. Okay. I, I can't. My family's here and my work is here. I can't just leave. Okay. Did you and Mr. Pettis attempt to come to some sort of agreement where uh, the girls could come to Texas and you'd send them back? Did you any ha have any discussion about something like that? Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us about that, please? He even texted me. He said I would get the girls for a week for Christmas and he was going to send a ticket down for them to fly down here. And they never came. He sent me a text message saying that the counselor that that's up there or somebody advised him. I'm so sorry, advised him that they could not see me right now. So he's not sending him them a ticket down here. But, but then he, go ahead. OK. And did you, in fact, find out later that he and the girls did come to Texas in, in December? They came. It was in December. They came in February for February 27th. That's when I I found out on Instagram that they were at the airport leaving um, Texas. And when you say February, do you mean February of 2023? Yes, OK. Did they reach out to you? Did Mr. Pettis or the girls reach out to you so you could see them? No, ma'am. All right. And you weren't aware that they were coming, so you couldn't reach out to them. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. In your opinion, do you feel as if Mr. Pettis has been uh, co-parenting with you? No, ma'am. Uh, and, and, and not talking about visits, but do you have regular conversations about how the girls are doing or updates from Mr. Pettis considering they're living with him? Since they left New York? Or ever since they left Texas. Uh, I'm sorry, I get them back backward. Since they left Texas, no, I have not had any updates. And what about when they were living with Texas? I mean, living in Texas, was he co-parenting with you fairly, in your opinion, at that time? Not really, no, ma'am. All right, and you understand that um, having joint managing conservatorship doesn't mean that you get an equal amount of time. It's not always fifty-fifty. You understand that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So is it, 
do you believe that the time that you were supposed to get that Mr. Pettis denied you that time? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you think that um, the stress of the breakup between you and Mr. Pettis was um, burdensome for your two young girls? Like stressing them out? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, there was some testimony about um, some concerns that Mr. Pettis had about your current boyfriend. And what's his name, his full name? Daniel. Do you and Daniel have a tumultuous relationship? Meaning, is there domestic violence? Is, is there arguing? No. Okay. Um, can you recall an occasion when um, you and Mr. Acosta had an argument and or a fight in front of your children? No, ma'am. Would you say that um, from what you've seen, does it appear that Daniel is loving towards your girls? Yes, ma'am. Um, Amber, would you, would you, do you consider yourself a protective mother? Yes, ma'am. If, if Daniel, well, let me ask you this. What, is there an agreement between you and Daniel as to who discipline your girls when they're with the two of you? Um, we don't discipline them. I usually, if something's wrong, I call, like there's an incident that happened regarding she didn't want to do her homework, I pretty much put three-way with me and Anthony. So, <clears throat> and we got that taken care of at the time, but he doesn't discipline the kids at all. Okay. So if, if there needed to be, or if somebody needed to do something, would that person be you? It would be me. Okay. Um, have the girls ever expressed to you that they were afraid of Daniel? No, ma'am. All right. Your Honor, if I may, and I'm hoping I followed your rules, but if I may share my screen, I have uh, a couple of pictures that I'd like to show Ms. Pettis and attempt to have them admitted. That's fine. And let's, let's, let's see what Mr. Humsberger says, but it, just bring them up on the screen and we'll see what they are. Okay. Um, were these uploaded to the box? Hey. Yep. Okay, let me take a look and see. I, I haven't seen them yet. Oh, look how cute. Every, is it clear enough for, for you all to see? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Amber, I am showing you what has been marked as, marked as respondents exhibit two. Do you recognize this picture? Yes, ma'am. Do you, does it look like it's been other than the white space around it and it being on screen, does it look like it's been altered or changed in any way? No, ma'am. Okay. Is it an accurate depiction of what it is purported to be here on the screen? Meaning, does it does it appear to be what it, it's supposed to be, you and three of your kiddos? Yeah. Okay. Your Honor, I, I move to admit respondents to. Okay. The objection. If respondents to is admitted. Ms. Benford, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Amber, can you tell us who's in this picture? It's, I'm sorry, it's Ariel, Aurora, and Faith. And is, um, so I'm assuming Faith is the one in the, in the pink dress? Mm -hmm. And Aurora's okay. in, and Ariel's the tallest one. Okay, so Ariel is in the black t-shirt and Aurora, Aurora is in the uh, turquoise? Mm -hmm. When was this picture taken? Uh, I would say, I think it was in spring break. Uh, not this year, but the year before we went, um, to, uh, we went to Chicago and we came back. Oh, wow. Okay. This was in Missouri, in Missouri, where the bridge is at. <laughs> All right. And who attended this, this trip with you? Is it just the four of you or did anyone else, uh, else go with you all? Daniel. And um, he we he had work, so we he transports patients. So we took a patient up to Chicago, and we dropped him off, and we visited around Chicago and Missouri. Okay. So, and were there any issues that that you became aware of during that trip? No, ma'am. Okay. 
All right. I'd like to show you. Okay. I am showing you now um, um, what has been a picture that has been marked as respondents exhibit number three. Do you recognize this picture? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Amber, right. will you please tell us who these two people are in this picture? That is Aurora and that's Daniel. All right. And when was this picture taken? This, I don't remember the date, but it was a, a couple months ago. He did a selfie. He was uh, watching them while they were, I was at work and he was taking pictures together. So they wanted to send me some pictures. Okay. While you, while you were at work? Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and Amber, and you have, um, well, I, I won't ask that. Have, have you ever left your kiddos with Daniel and, and return and had a cause for concern? No, ma'am. Okay. And in this picture, whether it's true or not, they appear to be happy or unbothered. Would you agree? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. I um, like to show you what has been marked as respondents number four. Can you see it? Can you see what has been marked as respondents number four, Ms. Pettis? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> Does this uh, picture appear to have been changed or altered in any way? No, ma'am. Okay. And uh, does it appear to be an accurate depiction of what's supposed to be in the picture? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to um, move. Uh, um, I've moved to admit respondents number four. No objection. It's admitted. Uh, Ms. Benford, you may proceed. Okay. Thank you. Amber, can you please tell us about this picture? Where is this? We opened a, a booth in a flea market in Pflugerville, Texas, and she was helping us make a booth. That was our little booth behind us. Okay. Well, what were you selling? Um, little knickknacks, um, purses. It's like a Goodwill, but we would purchase the items or um, we would go buy, buy them um, in Mexico, bring them back and resell them again. Okay. And in this picture, uh, well, on this particular day, was there anything that could have caused you some concern between that happened between Ariel and Daniel? No, ma'am. No. Okay. And Amber, are you wanting the court to order that the children be placed with you and you be the primary conservator? Or are you asking that the court order the MSA as it was agreed to? As the MSA has agreed to. All right. And are you simply wanting Mr. Pettis to uh, co-parent fairly with you? Yeah. All right. Are you wanting to have access to your children? Yes, ma'am. All right. Are you wanting them to have standard visitation for, well, as much as you can, given the fact that he's in, in New York now? Like get standard. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Can you keep them safe? Yes, ma'am. Will you keep them safe? Yes, ma'am. All right. There was some mention earlier about um, CPS and some mental health issues. And due to time, I'm going to try my best to go over those things briefly. Let's start with the with the mental health. Ms. Pettis, do you suffer from uh, mental health illnesses or a illness? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I was suffering mental illness for 14 years of marriage since we have not been together. Um, I have uh, not been ill or admitted into the hospital since then. I've had a job. I went to school. I'm attending school right now. Um, I participate in the church. Um, I've been going to church since I've left. And Pastor Adam, Pastor Brent have been very supportive, my church family. Um, okay. I've been doing really good. All right. Do you have a diagnosis? PTSD. PTSD. Uh, what is the PTSD from? Um, when I was, uh, and, um, but you have that, that, hey, you have that under control now. Mm -hmm. Do you take medication for it? 
No, ma'am. The doctor, my psychiatrist said it was my PTSD was under control. And that since I was being mentally abused constantly for 14 years, that I needed to leave. So I left and he's like, that's the reason why you're on so many medications. So I left and he's like, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm fine. I keep in contact with him. And he's all like, well, I told you, you didn't need to take these medicines. Okay. So different environment. He said that I'm in and that's why I'm doing a lot much better. All right. So just so I understand, you're saying since having left the marriage with Mr. Pettis, that you are no longer having PTSD symptoms or suffering from that? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, and you would consider yourself healthy? Yes, ma'am. All right. And do you want to visit them in New York or would you like for them to come to Texas? I would like them to come to Texas. All right. Can you share in the, the cost to have them brought to Texas or to send them back if need be? If I have to, I would have to figure something out to get the cost. Well, the court needs to know. Can you do that? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. There was also a mention of some CPS investigations. Let's just go over that briefly. Uh, Were there, in fact, some CPS investigations uh, when you and Mr. Pettis were together? There was over seven, eight CPS cases. Um, Some were... uh, coming up positive, both of us. Um, another CPS that I can remember was uh, my son um, was hit by him um, in CPS. So uh, that's one of family violence in there, but it was the case. All those cases were dropped though. Okay. So when you say cases, do you mean actual cases that went to court or investigations? It was investigations. Investigations. And the investigations closed? Yes, all investigations from CPS has been closed. Okay. Where your children were removed from you or Mr. Pettis and placed in a foster home or familial placement or anything like that? No, ma'am. No? Okay. Do you Except- understand what a co- COS stands for? I'm sorry. My son, my oldest one, yes. was re- he moved it. He moved- not responsive, Your Honor. I don't think there's a pe- question pending at this point. Okay. All right. So what was the question, Ms. Benford? We have a little audio trouble going. Um, I, my last question was, were the cases, no, I, my last question was, did Ms. Pettis know what COS stood for? Oh. Do you, Ms. Pettis, know what COS stands for? She does okay. not. Have you ever heard of court-ordered services? No, ma'am. Did you ever go to court at all uh, and participate or or be ordered to participate in services by a judge related to CPS? No, ma'am. Okay. Did CPS ever require you to participate in services without a court? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do you understand or recognize the acronym family FBSS or family-based safety services? I'm kind of confused. No, ma'am. That's okay. That's okay. Did CPS ask you to participate in any services? Like to like classes or anything like that? Yes. No. No? No. Uh, Okay. Well, good. Did you and Mr. Pettis just simply provide clean drug tests and they close their case, their investigation? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. And there was um, a temporary order that came out of this case earlier in 2019. You remember that? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember or did you agree to leave the children in the care of Mr. Pettis? Yes, ma'am. At that hearing? Yes, ma'am. And do you remember why? Because we both didn't want to take a drug test and have the kids to be in the state system. Okay. And is it also because Mr. Pettis is the one who Russian had the leading. home? I'm sorry. Um, I, I, you know what it is a little bit, but I'm curious about this. So the objection leading is sustained. 
but I do want you to re-ask the question because I would like to know more about it. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, did you, what were your other reasons for leaving them with Mr. Pettis? We had the house. Okay. And was that their, their, had they been living there the majority of their lives? Yes, he had the house and his, he had his whole family staying there. So it wouldn't be a good idea for me to go back. So I went to stay with my mom. Well, understood. You're not going back, but was it safe for the girls to be there? And was there a support system there? Yes, they, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, and when I say support system, who, who all was living in the house with Mr. Pettis after you left? There was um, grandma and grandpa there, Mary Jane Fernando. That's the grandma and grandpa. And then there was uh, Annalise. These are the kids. There was Annalisa, Chulo, um, and Jessica that were there too. Who is Annalisa, Chulo, and Jessica? The grandkids. And then Gina was there too. She was just moving in. And that's it. And that's what? His sister. Okay. And were these his sister's kids? Uh, yes, those were his sister's kids. Okay. Amber, you've mentioned church a couple of times. Uh, how long have you been participating in the church in which you go to now? Four and a half years. Four and a half years. And have you taken your kids to that church? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do they, do you know, well, would the church members know your girls? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And is Daniel an active participant in your church? Yes, he's been there for 10 years. Okay, so, oh. Okay. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. All right, very good. Uh, Mr. Huntsberger, do you have any questions for this witness? Uh, yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> All right, everyone be mindful of the time because obviously my staff jumps off at five, so we yes. do need to. I'll uh, try to be brief. Okay. 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 Um, let me just start kind of in the beginning. Um, so you have a child, Faith, correct? Yes. And you, you've stated that uh, this child is not Anthony Perez's child, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you didn't list him on birth certificate either, did you? No, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. <clears throat> so you have had you had a boyfriend right after the breakup back in 2000, late 2018, early 2019, and you started dating somebody named Daniel. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. But yes, this is a different Daniel than who you're dating today. Yes, sir. What is the last name of the, the first Daniel that you dated? Matza. Matza. So I'm going to call him Mr. Matza so that we can differentiate between the two of them. Okay. Um, did you, were there any cases uh, involving domestic violence between you and Mr. Matza? Yes, sir. Okay. And police were called and there was reports made and stuff like that? Did any of these uh, occur in front of the children? No, sir. All right. And so that was, uh, presumably, that's one of the reasons why you're not dating Mr. Matza anymore? Yes, I didn't want to be in the same predicament that I was in my marriage. Yes, sir. Okay. And so then uh, when did you start dating uh, Mr. Acosta? Two and a half years ago. Okay, so we're talking somewhere around early 2021? that be correct? Yes, sir. Around okay. there, I think. And so in May of 2022, you were dating Mr. Acosta. Is that correct? I don't remember the month. I can't tell you the month exactly. Okay. Well, May of 2022 is barely a year and a half ago. So you were, you were, your t prior testimony was that you've been dating him for two and a half years. So a year and a half ago, you were dating Mr. Acosta, correct? That doesn't make sense. Uh, I dated M Mr. Matza in 2019. Okay, I'm talking about Mr. Acosta. Mr. Oh, Mr. Acosta, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, I, I've been dating him. What'd you say again? I'm sorry. 20. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to get to May of 2022. In May of 2022, you were dating Mr. Acosta, correct? Yes. And there was an uh, incident that happened in front of uh, in Cedar Park in May of 2022, correct? Yes. And Cedar Park police were called? Yes, sir, because he would not let me have his girlfriend. His second girlfriend would not let me have my daughters. So I had called the police to honor the um the objection tree. unresponsive, Your Honor. No, I think she's responding to it. She, the Cedar Park police were called. I, I mean, you know, come on. It's not, okay. I think it's okay. 
We may proceed, all right? And the children were there during this incident, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And Mr. Acosta got into, a, at, at the very least, what you could call a pretty heated verbal argument with Cedar Park Police, correct? No, sir. We actually had his, own, he had his daughter, his 13-year-old daughter with us. So she was there at the time, too. Now, since the divorce was filed in late 2018, have you had any further okay. CPS involvement? I'm so sorry. Can you hold on just one? I'm so sorry. Okay. What did you want to watch? What do you want to watch? Element? Okay. I put element on for you, okay? It's good? Yeah. Okay. No cry. I'll be back in a little bit, okay? I'm so sorry about that. She just woke up. That's all right. Let's let's get back to it though, because we're starting to run short on time, okay? okay? Um all right. Okay. Miss Miss Perez, since um since you break up uh with Mr. Perez in late 2018 or, or September, I believe it was, have you had any other CPS investigations? Yes. And how many investigations have you had since uh, 2018? Two. Okay. Did I correct? And the the first one, did this involve uh, the first Daniel? Mr. I believe you said Mariah? No. Okay. Did it involve anything with Mr. Acosta? No. Okay. What did it involve? It involved... It involved... Uh, I left the place and I left the house on September 30th and he said that I was doing drugs, smoking weed. Okay, so the first one you're saying... So was, they drug tested me. What was the drug involvement one? Is that correct? Yes. I can hear you kind of... Can you hear me now? Can I hear you? Yeah, I think you can, but try to sit still and hold your phone still because when you move around too much, for some reason, it interrupts the signal. Okay, so right after you broke up, you had a CPS case and they were investigating you for taking drugs. Is that correct? Yes, because they said that Anthony called. Okay, and I believe you testified that that was one of the reasons why you left the, the, your daughters with Anthony was that you didn't want to take a drug test. Is that correct? I left Anthony because I didn't want to keep doing the drugs. So that's why I left and the abuse, mental abusement. And then that's why I left. Actually, I had custody of the girls and then we went to court. And then that's why none of both of us did not want to take it because we didn't want the girls in the system. So that's why the girls stayed with him. Okay. When CPS investigated you, did you do a drug test for CPS? Yes, I did. Okay. And CPS left the children with Mr. Perez, correct? Ms. Perez? I can't hear. Ms. Perez, can you hear us? Um, can you hear us? I barely can hear you. Go ahead. All right. Like I said, try to find a place and get situated. We'll try to speak up, see if you can't turn your volume up a little bit. It's probably you turned your speaker off, okay? Okay. All right, let's 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 keep at it, Mr. Hunsberger. All right, uh, Ms. Perez, you said you had a, a two CPS investigations after the breakup. What was the second investigation about? The, the second one was um, he called CPS saying that um, I was taking methamphetamine. Okay, so this was a, another CPS investigation about you doing drugs. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and they ruled that out because when I took the drug test, then nothing came up positive at all. Are you currently working? Yes, sir. What kind of work are you doing now? I work at DoorDash. Okay. Um, are you current on your child support? No, sir. Do you receive food stamps? No, sir. And did you receive food stamps pre previously? Um, when we were married together. Yes, sir. All right. So let's talk a little bit about visitation. Um, 
ever since, let's say, May of 2022, when that incident at Cedar Park occurred, um, you have not had consistent visitation with your, your daughters. Is that correct? I haven't. No. Okay. I haven't had any consistent visitation even before that. Okay. And um, <clears throat> are you currently on disability? Yes, sir. Okay, and is this is your disability for a mental health condition? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, did you ever tell Anthony that you have brain cancer? Yes, sir. I got a I had a letter that somebody sent through me through mail, and I actually took that letter to a doctor, and they said that letter was false. So somebody was sending me a letter, and I went to go to the doctor to get checked, and that was incorrect. Okay, so you don't have brain cancer. No, sir. Um, Mr. Perez has sent you text, text messages about the counseling and also has sent you pics of the girls throughout the last year, correct? He sent me three pictures, three pictures within this year when they left. And he also sent you a, a text message about him and the girls coming to Texas back in February, correct? Yes, sir. No, he sent me, I'm so sorry. He sent me a text message because I, I have the text message. It says that he was going to send him down here for a week for spring break, but he wasn't going to come down here because somebody advised him that I cannot see my children until the decree is signed. And it's in a text message. All right. Um, and to the best of your knowledge, um, Mr. Perez left to New York um in uh was it november of 2019 is that is that your understanding i guess let me ask you this one do you know when mr perez left for new york 2019 uh, i'm sorry no. not 2019, 2022 november 2022 i, I totally messed up that date <laughs> sorry about that so on that honestly he told me that he was gonna leave and i said um I said, you can't do that. And then he told me, I would say on Thanksgiving in a, in a text, I'm leaving. So he didn't give me any, really any notice because he didn't say when he was going to leave. I'll pass with this, Shona. Okay, very good. Anything else, um, Ms. Benford? Nothing for the Honor. All right, very good. Um, so any other witnesses? Uh, yeah, yeah. We did have a motion to confer with the child. I don't know if you, so if you want to confer with the child or not. I did see the motion. I did see the motion to confer with the child. Um, um want to do that today or another day or, or at all? We're going to have to do it another. Well, I, I'm, I'm kind of almost wondering if it's necessary, quite honestly. Um, I would, would like to go on and make a ruling. Is there any, anything else that you all need from me? or that you need any other witnesses? Your Honor, I don't know if, if this would be helpful to the court, so I'll let the court decide there. The pastor and his wife are available for testimony. They've seen the Miss, Miss Pettis with the girls. Uh, they've seen Miss Pettis and her current boyfriend. They all attend the, the same church. Uh, I'm very impressed by the effort she has taken to make sure those girls, you know, that, that she and her husband are on a good spiritual path. I'm very impressed by that fact, but honestly, I don't know that I need that testimony. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. It, it wouldn't be anything substantive other than some character evidence. Of mm -hmm. Well, I have no doubt. I have no doubt of her honesty on that, that she and, and her uh, boyfriend are making every effort to uh, keep their lives on a good path. And uh, my hat's off to them for that. I think it's incredibly important. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other witnesses, uh, Ms. Benford? No, Your Honor. Rest and close. All right. What about you, Mr. Huntsberger? Um, no, Your Honor. No. All right. Very good. All right. So here's my ruling. The parties are, I, I uh, pronounced them divorced. I will allow a uh, father to continue for the children to live with him in New York. They're doing well there. And I see no reason to change that. Um, so that's going to require, I think, some alteration of a geographic restriction. Is that right, Mr. Huntsberger? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right, so we need to get that done. I am concerned about visitation for mom um, because she does live far away and it's hard, but I think that they 
that's the parties I need them to confer on that and to find a way to to do that. I would like the parties to attend the free Travis County DRO co-parenting classes if they've not already done so uh, to try to, it sounds like both, both sides are working hard uh, to try and bridge that gap. But I think that those free classes, you can do them online. You don't have to be there that you don't have to go with the other person. Even they make them very convenient, but I think those classes would maybe give the parties some common language to talk about co-parenting these beautiful children together. Uh, I am very impressed by both sides and the efforts that the, that they are making with these children. Uh, Mr. Hunsberger, um, any anything else? I'm going to ask you to draft the order. Is there anything else that I left out that we need to rule on? No, Your Honor. I mean, the, the order is pretty much drafted. I can add in the co-parenting class and, yeah. and get that to Ms. Benford today. I mean, that, that shouldn't be hard yeah. to add in there. And that class is free through Travis County DRO. There's no charge for it, and it's online. So there's no... It's really just to do nothing but to give them some common language to talk in. So let's go on and get that order to me. Uh, I will give you all until uh, Friday at three o'clock to get that order to me, and then we will um, we'll get it signed for you. If you need more time, of course, please let me know. All right. I'll get that out today. Thank you. All, all right. Thank you all. It's you both put on a very, very good case. And I'm very impressed with both of these parents and the effort they're taking with these children. And I wish you all all the best. All right. Goodbye. Thank you, Your Honor.